Good morning, it's Aya Wimala, and today's Thursday, September the 24th. We're well into fall. I was talking with people in the Florida Blue Lotus group yesterday evening, <clears throat> and they were telling me they'd had, suddenly their weather was really beautiful, and that it's typical Florida weather. Their humidity drops about in half and they had all been out being able to be outside and uh, if they were there close to a beach, they were able to go to their beaches and really enjoy the day without the heavy hum humidity. So that, it was so nice to see them all. They had all been so refreshed by the change in their weather. I love seeing that. So we're still going on we're hanging in there that's good we're doing we're all doing the best we can and uh, hopefully you're finding benefits to this strange time we're living in and those benefits may just be uh, seeing how well you can do with adversity which we don't a lot of us don't experience in this country certainly not very often for the for, for most of us but uh, we're kind of seeing what we're made of, right? And it's, uh, it's a difficult time. There's no way to get around that. But this is, this is in that realm of samsara, that realm of this earthly life. So do your best. And if you have more time on your hands than you're used to, l let that be a good thing for you. Read more, take more walks. Connect with your family. Find something to study. And I have discovered over this period that uh, practicing my ukulele has not been one of those things I've turned to. I feel like uh, that that was a surprise to me. I thought I thought I'd be able to become a ukulele player, but it's not where my heart is usually. Usually it would be. I'd be reading or uh, looking for a class to go to. So one thing I've learned about myself. So um, today I wanted to read some uh, another passage from this beautiful book, Peace and Kindness. So it's a little tiny 50 something pages book and it's been a gold mine for me and the beautiful meta practice that I'm uh, trying to learn I'm still reading parts, most of it is from this little book. But I want to read something, and the, here's the beauty of the passages I want to read to you today. They're not that long. The, it's a book on metta, or this Reflections on Metta is the name of the essay I'm reading from today. Reflections on Metta, and remember, and it's Ajahn Sumedho, who is, who's a, uh, an American who was a Thai forest monk and was one of the people in, uh, he was in England when Ajahn Chah built Amarawati and Chethurst. And then he came back to America uh, to, to be involved or to, to lead the building of Abayagiri, which is in California, Northern California. And it's a large, very, uh, I've never been able to visit there, but a really wonderful place, a monastery or a, a training monastery. So this is the, the good thing about this is this is going to talk about some political things and about practicing metta in a political situation. But this was written in either 1990 or maybe earlier and put into this booklet, which was published in 1990. So it's not talking about our government and it's very lightly touching on what was going on in Britain, in the UK at the time when Margaret Thatcher was the prime minister. So when we talk about sending Meta to political figures, I'm trying to keep it more distant from, from all of us because we've here in America, we've pretty much hardened our positions in this country. And so I don't want you, I don't want it to be unworkable for us 
I, I like us to see these teachings, and it's uh, seeing it from a political distance of 30 years at least. And so maybe that makes it, that can make it easier for us to really take in to our hearts. You can, you can give me feedback and let me know about that. So from this little book, I'm reading from Reflections on Metta. And after that, we'll do the Metta, short Metta practice. So he has just finished. I had read some of this earlier, but then he talks about uh, Buddhist cosmology and sending how we can send Metta for all the animals we love. And these, these are often also animals that we eat. And we, send, we can send metta to the animals that serve as food. And uh, he has a, I, I may have read this chapter. So um, he sends metta for them because they give a lot to us. We, we often use these animals for survival in the human com community. But how many people really think of thanking them for it? For sending goodwill to them and expressing gratitude for all the good things we get and benefits we have from these animals. So now I'll start with the part I want to read today. Gratitude is a beautiful quality to have in our mind. To really bring into consciousness what a benefit these animals are to us and how little we ever fully recognize or do anything for them. Well, we could get a kind of rebellious, revolutionary impulse and go over some night, raid the battery houses in the nearby farm, and let all the hens out. Free them, liberate them. That's it, that's real metta. But for those poor, wretched creatures, none would know what to do. They'd die if you just let them out. So it might be a seemingly kind act, this act of liberating them, but those chickens are not ready for freedom because they wouldn't know how to survive. They would just be terrified and lost. But we can reflect and send them goodwill. Nobody can stop us from doing that. And we can develop a way of life so that eventually this sort of unkind, exploitative, exploitative activity will lessen. The more we are aware and compassionate, the more we realize there are all kinds of ways and means of letting go of those kinds of exploitative activities and unnecessary cruelty. Here in Britain, we can reflect that this country allows us to live as Buddhists, it's a benevolent country. Even though we might have a lot of views and opinions about it on the negative side, overall it's all right. There's nothing terribly wrong with it, even if it's not perfect. But now we're no longer looking at it critically. We're not saying what's wrong with Mrs. Thatcher and the Conservative Party, or British politics, or the social problems of the country, the economics and all that because that's endlessly complicated and gets you nowhere. If that's all you do, thinking about all the political, economic, social problems of any country whatsoever will take you to despair because they are just endless. But an overall reflection isn't denying what's wrong or the faults and flaws in the system. The government here tends toward being benevolent and the majority of people would rather have goodwill for each other. They'd rather be fair to each other. They want justice and fairness, mercy. Whether they actually feel like that all the time under every situation is something else, but that's the general idea of the population as far as I can tell. And remember, he's speaking about Great Britain, about the UK back in 19. 7, 1990. So how can we help the government of this country? Metta is something we can spread every day, sending goodwill to the government, to Mrs. Thatcher, to the members of Parliament, House of Commons, House of Lords, 
willing good to them so that as we approach each other with goodwill, then all the fears and anxieties and threats diminish. If we just look at Mrs. Thatcher with a critical eye and hate her because she doesn't agree with our views and want to get rid of her and complain, then of course she reacts very strongly to that kind of treatment. Just as if I just criticize you and pick away at you all the time, then what happens? You dig in your heels and become more stubborn. Unless you're really mindful, you become more difficult. Because even if I'm right about it, even if you are doing things wrong, if I'm always on your back nagging away at you, it's not providing you with any kind of opportunity to rise up to a situation. All you're doing is feeling worse and worse, and then your rebelliousness is just a reaction. So you might do even worse things than just to spite me. This tendency to dwell endlessly on what's wrong and blame others creates the very conditions for the increasing of misery. But when we regard people as intelligent, mature beings, even if they aren't that way all the time, we give them the benefit of the doubt and most people will rise to a situation if they have the opportunity to do so. So please take all of that to heart, remembering we're using Margaret Thatcher and Great Britain in 1990 as our, as our model. Metta is not a blinding kind of quality. It's the willingness to admit the fault without dwelling on it, without being obsessed with what's wrong. Like metta for yourself, it doesn't mean that you say, I'm all right and I'm perfect and there's nothing wrong. It means that you are quite willing to admit weaknesses, faults within your experience of life, without making that end to anything. It's a clarity. The mind is clear, radiant, bright, and reflective. Rather than just a pink cloud that we blot out every ugly thing with, that's not metta, that's projecting a pink cloud from your mind. In the course of your practice, you can start contemplating your relationship with your parents. It would really be good to let your parents know that you love them. And this is whether they're alive or whether they're gone, which doesn't mean that you agree with them or like everything that they do. Metta means that you're not going to create a problem about the flaws and the weaknesses they have. You're not going to say, I love you, but I don't like the way you do this, and I don't like the way you do that, because that's just aggravating, isn't it? Yes, I love you, but you did this, and then you did that, and I didn't approve of it, and it was terrible, and you've ruined so many things, but I still love you, yes. What does that do to your heart? Now this will re release things within you to be able to say these things quite openly and honestly. You're not asking for them to even like it. You're not saying, I love you, and then expecting them to change suddenly overnight and be what you want, because that isn't love, is it? I, <laughs> that's a deal. I love you if you love me. If you don't love me, I don't love you. But this metta isn't a kind of deal we're making with anyone. We're not expecting anything back from it. We're not demanding any good result, even for ourselves. We're not prompt practicing metta just to have a happy mind. There's no radiance to that, because that kind of metta, although it's better than nothing, still lacks the radiance of a mind which makes no demand. With that mind, you're not even asking to be happy or have any happy moments in your life whatsoever because you're willing to just work with life, to forgive and to give forth goodwill. When we relate to each other like this, it has a good effect on our minds. But that's not what we're doing it for. It's worth doing in its own right, just as it is. 
If we're doing it for a good result, it will be disappointing because immediately selfish thoughts come in and that's not a good result. There will always be some form of suffering or dukkha. We become discontented about it. Well, I've been sending goodwill to that person for years now and they still hate me. Haven't got anything out of it, might as well stop. Then our goodwill is being sent with the idea of gaining something, of demand, expecting that they will appreciate it. So that's why it's important to understand the nature of the mind so that you begin to see the problem of selfish view. There is, that is going to put a damper on every experience. It's going always going to spoil every moment of your life as long as you're deluded in this way. You could be with the Buddha himself, and yet, with selfish view, you wouldn't even know it. You'd still be wretch, wretched. If Gautama Buddha came in here right now and sat down, and you were filled with self, selfish view, You'd be saying, Venerable Sir, why aren't there any Buddhas around? With people with whom we have a lot of resentment or bitterness towards, metta is a way of forgiving and reminding ourselves to let go of it. Start perceiving these people with metta rather than just being overwhelmed with bitterness and resentment. Even if you can't feel any real positive thing, metta needn't be all that magnificent. It can be just being patient and not making any kind of problem about it. It doesn't mean you like people who have been really rotten and unfair or those whom you can't like, yet you can be kind to them. You can forgive. You can do what is right and generous to them, even if you don't like it. So I think I've read part of that to you before, but I hope um, it's not overkill because what I see is metta practice is the thing that's going to, to save us during this time. And it's, it's extremely hard. It's very easy to need to blame and find fault. And even when this even when our country is in a, in a good place and things are running pretty well, um, it's our tendency, I think, as a nation to always need, first of all, to find who's to blame when something happens. We always need to know whose fault is it. And uh, when the Buddha taught, he said, when we, when we need to find out all of those things, uh, that's like being shot with an arrow twice. So the first one creates the injury. And the second one is that questioning, who did it? Whose fault is it? What kind of arrow is it? What kind of feather was it at the end? What kind of tip was it? And we may die just uh, trying to figure out where to place blame. So what we need to take care of first is that original in, uh, injury, right? So. I think our tendency is that even in good times. <clears throat> so it's, it's not a surprise that we magnify it when things are difficult. But this is a time where we can learn to change that for ourselves personally. So when we practice metta, we practice it for everyone, even the Margaret Thatchers of our culture and our time. So we have a few minutes Let's do um, uh, just a little bit. I'd like to do just a little bit from this beautiful metta practice. Sit for a few moments. Let's, let's sit quietly. I know you're already sitting with me, so let's just move our attention to a quiet practice. Sit quietly with, a, with your back straight for you. Gently close your eyes, feeling the rhythm of the breath as it enters and leaves your body. Just allow yourself to let go of past and future. Come into the present moment.
bring your attention to the feeling of the body and accept your body, accept this physical body just the way it is with kindness. Whatever condition, however you're feeling today or with pain you may have or soreness or uh, concerns weighing you down, accept it just the way it is with kindness and allow yourself to accept all the feelings, all the sensations of this body completely. Breathe in deeply with a sense of trust and well-being. And now breathe out, letting go of tension. Let tightness dissolve. And come back just to your normal breathing and observe your body as it breathes. Now imagine that gold, that light surrounded by you. <laughs> imagine yourself surrounded by light. If you like the color gold, then let it be a yellow golden light. Just allow yourself to draw that light into your body through every pore. And as you breathe in through your nostrils, just allow yourself to be feel, filled with that radiant light. And think to yourself, may this being be well. Now, when you have more time, you can just allow, do a body scan at this point and allow that light just to move all the way through each part of your body. Make peace with this view of yourself through forgiveness, compassion, and gentleness. May this being be well. Now think of your loved ones. This can be your family members or your close friends who form your family or they're, or they're added to your family. Just hold them in the light, the same light. May my loved ones be well. May they be at peace. Now bring up an image of your, of your typical daily situation at home or wherever you are with the people it involves daily. People you like or dislike, feel conflict with, love, fear, or worry for. May each one of these beings be well. Just put aside aversion, fear, worry, guilt. At this moment, allow yourself to be kind. Think of someone you know having a difficult time. Send these feelings of kindness towards them. Breathe in that light. Bring, bring out wishes for them to be well. So breathe in the light and breathe out wishing them well. someone who might be ill or stressed or anxious or going through some a painful experience. Breathe in that light and breathe out. 
for them. Gradually allow yourself just opening up more and more. Go out to people you barely know or someone whose face you would recognize but uh, not sure who they are. Sending these same thoughts. Sending out kindness, wishing them well. Wishing them happiness. Now we really are moving out, acknowledging in your mind all the people you can conceive of in this world. This may be a faint feeling. The world is a big, big place. And we may be so caught up in our immediate situation that we've narrowed it down. But now, allow your heart to open. Just to allow everyone on this planet, in this world, allow them to come into your consciousness, into consciousness. That just means open up your heart to allow all the people in this world to be felt. Feel how that can immediately open you up. If your body has felt constricted or tight, if your heart feels shut down, imagine everyone in the world, all beings, See, see what your mind does with that. It might be indignant about some people. Let go of that indignation for this moment. Allow a sense of peace to envelop all beings. The liked, the disliked, the familiar, and the unfamiliar. Just for this moment. Allow that kindness to envelop every single being. And feel a sense of peace surrounding all beings. And now we're moving back further as if we're out in space and look down on this entire planet. and extend the sense of peace to the entire planet we're on, the earth itself, the air, the layers of the atmosphere. Embrace it with your heart and surround it with light. Now turn your attention to that sense of peace and light being we're out in space and feel that sense of peace and light allow it to expand outwards without limit letting the sense of me and the world dissolve in the stillness of the present. Feel that connection with each other, with all of you who are spending time with me right now, and with all, all of the world, all, of, all that we can imagine and then beyond. We're all connected. Allow it to expand outwards without limit, letting the sense of me and the world dissolve. It may last for a moment. You may be able to hold it a little bit longer, but don't worry when it, when it passes away. 
You can practice this every time you can allow your heart to open. Now come back and come to the feeling of knowing the screen of the mind, the place where images arise. Let it be quite empty or quite full, choiceless, being illuminated by the soft light from the heart, light from the breath, warm and gentle, beginning, letting go, patient kindness. Now come back when you're ready. If you can keep sitting, do that, please. And I think remembering those words, patient kindness, allow for yourself and for others that patience. Allow this kindness for every being and that unlimited radiance of it. Be patient with it, with yourself, with other people, with other living beings. Don't be demanding, just keep practicing patient kindness. Stay with that. And when you are ready, you can slowly open your eyes. But if you can, keep sitting. I'm leaving now. Tomorrow I'm going to send, I have a, a routine doctor's appointment up in Wisconsin. But I'm going to be sending out a surprise uh, pre-recorded meditation. So hopefully I can time it to come out at 10 o'clock. <laughs> but I'll get it out. Okay. Have a beautiful day. If you can sit longer, now's the perfect time. Take care.